Alright, well, I've been promising it for like a month now, but we're finally doing it. Scarred Yangaruga. So, this is an interesting one for a number of reasons. I'm back in the Gold Rathian armor. Again, there's a good reason for that. I'm going with Defense Up L. Again, there's a good reason for that. I'll explain more as we get into the fight. But, this was one that... This was a pretty stressful fight. And, again, we'll explain more as we go along. I'm doing the event quest, Scar Sell the Whole Story, because... Again, well, one, the Ancient Forest has a lot more traps and stuff, environmental hazards I can use. And two, he wasn't showing up and getting out of there as much as I wanted, and there's a bunch of tough monsters around there as well, so that's mostly why. Alright, here we go. So, I think a lot of people are kind of confused about what Scar Jangaruga is even sort of supposed, even really supposed to be. Um, it's, he's, alright, so let, let me just break it down. So there is no tempered Yangaruga, no regular tempered Yangaruga. Instead, what they did was they replaced him with this monster called Scarred Yangaruga, who is basically tempered Yangaruga, but with an ear missing and one extra attack. That's basically it. Why they did this, I have no idea. I, I don't know why they chose to make him like this, but that's how he is, and so that's what we're doing. He has very slightly different drops than regular Yangaruga, like he has this thing called the Scratch Shell, which is used in some weapons. And he also doesn't drop the Conflagrant Sack, so there's that. But yeah, he's basically a temper- you can think he is effectively tempered Yangaruga. In fact, he replaces him, so he sort of is, with one extra item. Although he is counted as his own monster, like, in the... What is it called? In the... In, what's it called? Monster Encyc... I forget what the name is. Monster... It's the encyclopedia thing. But the ecology... In the ecology book, he's counted as a different monster. So... I guess he counts. I mean... The only extra attack they give him is his aerial fireball, which is, it's quite a cool attack, and... Yeah, he's, there, he's doing at least but one version. He's got a couple versions of it. He's got a front run he can actually move from side to from one part of the... Go to another in the air while launching fireballs, which I think he'll, he'll do eventually. Um, so, if he's basically a, a tempered Yangaruga, why did I take, it take me so long to get to him? Well, being a tempered Yangaruga means a lot. It means he can actually one-shot you. No, I'm not kidding. I have been one-shot him by him before. It's kind of ridiculous. So normally tempered monsters have more health and do more damage. He really just does more damage. He is... He actually usually has less health. It ranges enormously from like 16,000 to around 21,000 while regular Yangaruka is hovering around 22,000-ish, so... He's actually easier to kill than regular Yangaruga, but as a trade-off, damage is insane. There's a reason I am running Gold Rathian Armor and I went with Defense Up L. Gold Rathian Armor has Enhanced Divine Blessing skill, which is basically the one that reduces, has a random chance to reduce the number of you know, damage you take. It also comes with a health boost, a little bit of health boost, which is really useful for this fight, and it also has really good protection against fire. I would absolutely recommend running this armor set. It is very useful. Please run it. Do yourself a favor. It makes it much easier. I tried running him with my Energigante, with my Rune Energigante armor, and he literally one-shot me, so be aware. Bringing the right armor set can make this guy very... Being an armor... The armor set you choose for this guy can really make make or break your run, so be careful. He, he can kind of screw with you. Other than that, 
Um, he's a he's a tougher. He's a slightly enhanced Yangaruga. I don't know what you want me to say about him other than that. If you've seen my Yangaruga video, you've seen 90% of what he's going to do here. All of his brake parts are the same. In case you need a refresher, tail, wing, tail can be severed, wing can be broken, ear, singular ear can be broken, head can be broken, back can be broken. That's it. That's, that's all of his breakable parts. Uh, aside from that, basically everything else is the same. According to the wiki, apparently he attacks faster and is more aggressive. I haven't really noticed any difference between him and Yangaruga in that respect. But fast and aggressive was also Yangaruga thing, but I guess he's even more of that. I guess. Again, I couldn't tell. I haven't exactly fought Yangaruga recently, so... Um, maybe he is, and I just didn't notice. But... Uh, sure. Why not? So, that's all I have to say about him. What am I going to talk about for the next, I don't know, 18 minutes? Hmm, a couple things. So, next monster, we'll talk about that right now, is going to be Lunastra. Uh, I'd end up finding out how to fight her. Turns out she even has her own op double optional quest, which, again, a lot of Master Ring monsters seem to have. Well, it sound, no, she had that in, no, I'm not sure why I'm saying that, but she had it in high rank, so I'm guessing they're doing it again. For some reason. So, I'm probably going to end up, I'm end up farming the, uh, Shadow Day Aura Armor, because that wind pressure for the ultimate is really annoying. The other thing that I will be heavily farming is... Or my might do is I will need to raise the wildfire waste to level six to get it to appear, and then after that, you want to once she appears in a quest and you go into a quest, sorry, go into an expedition with her. Once she appears in a location and you go on an expedition, you like collect her tracks and whatnot, you can get her to appear. Yes, so that's what I'll be doing. The other possibility is running Raging Brachidios, but again, I'm probably going to run Lunastra just because I know her a little bit better. I have a general idea of how she behaves and what she does, so that's what I'll be doing. So, uh, yeah, that's all i got to say about that. So, but I guess we'll move more about Scardian Garuga. So, the main two attacks you really need to watch out for are his Tail Swipes and also his Deep Dive. Those two attacks can actually one-shot you. I've been one-shot by his Deep Dive in the past. So, if it seems like I'm playing a bit scared, it's because I am. I have to avoid the Beak Dive, otherwise he can, he can probably one-shot me. I don't know how well he can do that because I am running a little more health than I was when he did end up getting that one-shot off on me. But, uh, either way, something I'd rather not have. It. So you can also see me focus on the tail again. The tail has all the poison spikes. I end up getting, I think it's an ear break. Right there. So, yeah, watch out for that. Again, he's got three fireball attacks. A center one, a triple spread, and of course the fireball. So the machine gun fireball. Do it again. He also beha apparently he behaves slightly differently in the air as well. I, I didn't really notice. I think he sort of charges and swipes a little bit more, but you know, it doesn't seem very different to me. But you know, I'm just bad at noticing those things. So, don't take my word for it. He may behave quite differently than regular and Yurga, and I just straight up didn't notice. Which wouldn't be unusual, let's just say that much. So I believe his tail's about, yep, his tail comes off. Once his tail's off, he is actually quite a bit easier. It really reduces the range on his tail attacks. Because his, his tail actually makes a pretty significant portion of his tail. And it also removes his ability to deal poison damage. Meaning that you don't have to deal with that anymore. 
So I'm not sure whether I w or not I would recommend bringing Antidote Jewels on the one hand. Uh, if you aren't able to get his tail off as easily as I did, because I'm actually running Destroyer 3. Destroyer 3 is really good for pretty much any monster, so I always try and build as much Destroyer part as I can. Um, what else? Uh, I guess if you can't get it off early, it is worth building antidote and bringing healing items. I really do not like what they did with the Vespoids. They're just annoying now. They can't deal enough damage to you or ever really get you in a position where, like... Because if you're fighting a monster in that area, then you're usually moving around enough where they can't really hit you, but... They're... Uh, I do not like the Vespoid change. It's just... Kind of annoying. I think you end up missing the... You end up getting it here? No. He moves too quickly. Which is kind of sucky, but yeah. Ends up not making a huge difference. I believe... I forget which part of break that is. I believe one of his wings. Yeah, it's the left wing. We end up breaking that. Uh... One good thing about this quest is that he has turf wars with both these monsters, so you can drag either either of them show up. You can get a good turf war with them. He'll end up having a turf war with. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, oh, it's an ogre. Eventually, so it's cool, I guess. And then. Yeah, I guess the main thing you to worry about him is everything with the uh, regular Yanguruga, plus be careful to mitigate his damage. Other than if you had no problem with regular Yanguruga, you will have no problem with him. Same deal. But what else can I talk about? Um, future the channel again. So I did say I wanted to do more... Actually, we're not going to talk about the future of the channel. We're going to talk about something else. Future of Monster Hunter World. Isn't that interesting? So, for those of you who don't know, Capcom is not exactly planning on keeping this game up forever. According to them, they would like to keep running for two to five years at most. They don't plan on using it, doing like a live service thing like a lot of games are doing. So, you know, Dauntless is going live service. Dauntless is a very good game, but whatever. Um, what else? Uh, so, I sort of beg the question as to what they're doing next. Obviously, the COVID-19 has definitely thrown a lot of that off. So, you know, they had to, they had to delay the last round update because of it. So, I'm not expecting anything super soon, but maybe kind of soon, because Japan's handling things a little bit differently. So, what I would really love is... So, one of two things to happen. Either... We get. It. I'm hoping that they might go back on their word and without. Well, they so they initially said they're only going to do one expansion. However, I think there might be room for a second expansion. It might be have to be a little bit smaller. You know, maybe I'm not sure if there's like even enough like I guess space to do. A second expansion, because, like, this game's file is already absolutely enormous. I think it's, like... The regular base game, it's, like, I think combined with, like, the regular plus the base game. Like, the, the ice the Iceborne expansion plus the base game, I'm like, my computer is, like, 50 gigabytes or something ridiculous. So, that's something for you to, you know, take note of. Uh, so I'm not sure like another like massive like iceborne size expansion can be worth it, but I would like to see I would I'm sort of hoping for another expansion because there's a lot of monsters that I really love that just aren't in this game. The two that most immediately come to mind are Volstrax and Amatsu. I really love the designs, I really love their concept, and they're just not in the game and I really want them to be in this game. They're cool when I want them in this game, that's that's, that's really my only reason, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people I'm sure there's a lot of monsters that people really, really, really want to be in this game that just aren't. So, you know. 
However, sequels, um, I'm not sure how soon that's going to come out. Uh, it, it, I, my guess is they'll probably announce something. My guess is that some kind of new content will be coming very late in like quarter four or three or four of this year. So that's, that's sort of just my guess. I don't really know anything other than that. That's my guess. Again, I don't know for sure, but I had to guess. Something coming for it. For what, for what it's worth, that's my prediction, because this is about the time that I, that regular Monster Hunter came out last year. No, not last year. Two years ago. So, I mean, if I had to guess if something, that something was going to come out, it would be... Or if something was going to be announced be around that time. I don't know. I might make another video about this topic later on with my thoughts a little more composed. I'm kind of just rambling right now. But, yeah, like, another small expansion with, like, just a few monsters and, like, maybe, like, one new area. That could be pretty cool. I, I'd really like to see that happen. Like a, sort of like a mountainous sky sort of area, because that really fits with both Fall Strikes and the Mountain, which I really, really want in. I know I'm sort of just making my own fan expansion at this point, but... I think it'd be something really cool that they could definitely do. But, hmm. I mean, if they don't do that, I'm not sure what they would do. We already have a Latrion. So, I'm not sure what they would do next, but it seems like they do want to still update this game. Because they didn't really announce anything new coming, so I'm not sure what they would do. I don't know. Uh, as for... I'm not entirely sure where they would take this game in the future. There's a lot of possibilities, and, like, all of them seem to be about equally likely. I mean, they've said they don't want to do another expansion, a huge expansion pack. At least, like, another, like, Iceborne-style expansion pack, but... They could always go back on that. And... Right now, they're definitely seem to be just focusing on just small little updates, or smallish updates, where I just add like one or two. The pattern seems to be adding like two mo couple monsters at a time. So add like, like for example, like Safi Jiva, and I forget when the monster came out at the same time. I think it's Raging Brachidios came out, and then Alatron came out with Frosting Barioth, Arch Temper Namiel came out with. Uh, Furious Rejang. So, part of the one new kind of new monster plus one altered monster seems to be sort of their pattern thus far. So I don't know if they're going to continue that or if they're going to do something else entirely. I'll have to look into like seeing what they're going to do, try and do next. Because I mean, Alatrion's out now, and he's definitely something I'm interested in doing. He'll probably be quite far down the line, because I've got a lot of other monsters I want to do before him. Lunastra and Cold Frost came to mind, because I've already done them. And... It really leaves the door open for a lot of different possibilities to what they want to do with the game. Because I definitely think there's room for doing a little bit more. Although what that little bit more would be is kind of up in the air at the moment. If you get what I'm saying. There's a lot of, a lot of possibilities. I would really like, like to see just more cool, cool stuff. More interesting monsters, more Elder Dragons. Well, maybe not too much, too much, but too many more Elder Dragons. We've already got like a ton of them in this game. Hmm. You know? Huh. <sighs> I suppose... Hmm... I'm not sure what to say now. Sort of exhausted all my talking points. Kinda not really. Uh, what else? What else? I was gonna say something and now I've completely forgotten what I was gonna say. Wow, this is embarrassing, isn't it? So yeah, I'm gonna have to look into just... Seeing what they really want to 
they're thinking about doing with this game because I mean there's definitely a lot of possibilities with adding a couple new monsters in here and there or even or even like a new area even if it's like a huge area it could be like a little just small I think actually I, I've hit on something I think like a small little a small sky area like a little it's like a mountain peak sort of like the area where you fight Volstrax in Generations Ultimate, which I'm considering getting. I do have a Switch. And it just looks like there's really cool monsters in there that I haven't will be able to fight in World. As much as I love World and all the changes it's made, I really would like to see what the old Monster Hunter games looked like. Just... Maybe I'd carry it. I might get it. Maybe. If there's a really long wait and there's, like, no stuff for me to do in Monster Hunter World that I'm interested in doing, I might check it out. But, so, that's me, if I was, if I was going to update the game, I would add, like, a little sky area, add some, like, monsters specifically for design for that area, and that's sort of what I'd do. But, again, that's just me, I don't know what Capcom is thinking of doing. They've done an amazing job with the game so far, but, I really would just would like it. There's a couple of extra little monsters that would really complete the game for me. And I just really, really, really want Ball Strike because Ball Strike is so cool. Although I'm not sure if they want to do that because I think the, the Generations Ultimate servers are like still running, so you can still do their requests. So I'm not sure if I just, they want to make people at least want to buy Generations Ultimate. Generation they're not adding a lot of the monsters that are exclusive to those games. That's why I guess I don't really know the fight. But other than that, uh, uh, hmm. I, I, really, I really do just need to make an entirely new video on this, just expa expanding my thoughts on the situation. So. Well, there he is, Guardian Garuga. I know Sidor Daruga more of a Scorpio rambles on and on about stuff he's vaguely interested in, but again, he's so much like regular Yang Yangaruga, just tampered in with a couple extra attacks that there really wasn't much to say about him that I hadn't already said about regular Yangaruga, so I guess if you're more interested in my slightly more nuanced but still very dumb take on him, that's where you should go. Overall, uh, I guess if you just build, use the right armor set, use the right items, you know, he's not so bad. Uh, you can see me using Safi's Aqua Shot here because it's basically the best water weapon in the game. I think it's better than the Hydra's Arcana, so, you know. Maybe there's a Call to Roth weapon that's slightly better, but either way, works fine for me. Um, yeah, that's really all there is to him. He's basically a tempered monster. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know what you want me to say. But yeah, so, uh, I said I'll probably about do it for this video, so, you know, leave any questions, comments, criticisms, anything else you really want to in the comments. Uh, I, if you want to make that video speculating on the future or me going into my DLC idea. I'd I'd love to do that. So just tell me if you want me to know it. But yeah, that'll about do it for me. So I will see you next time. Peace out.